A robotic spacecraft built by a private sector company has landed on the moon. It was the first controlled descent to the moon by a US-built spacecraft since 1972, when NASA's Apollo program last put astronauts on the lunar surface. The company behind the mission, called Intuitive Machines, hopes to collect data with the lander, Odysseus, to better understand the lunar environment. Mission Director Tim Crane says while the spacecraft's journey is at an end, its work is only just beginning. What we can confirm, without a doubt, is our equipment is on the surface of the moon and we are transmitting. So, congratulations IM team. We'll see how much more we can get from that. An excellent call from our Mission Director, Empty Dr. Prime Tim on, Crane. Uh, IM1. Let's get more now with Leah Albrecht from DW Science joining me in the studio. Good morning, Leah. This is just the latest in a series of uh, lunar missions that we have seen. Why this sudden rush and fascination to get to the moon now? Yeah, it seems weird, right? After five decades, no one was interested in right. the moon. Now everyone wants to yeah. go there. <laughs> yeah, it's like the race to the moon is on again, definitely. And there are different reasons. reasons. Of course, the nations, countries also... Uh, commercial actors, they want to go there, want to test and demonstrate their knowledge, their technological power, which um, yeah, kind of um, has kind of impacts also on other um, technical areas. And another big reason is that there was water discovered on the moon. So that makes the moon a much kind of more promising destination to go to because we can produce drinking water for future astronauts. We can make rocket fuel if we split water into hydrogen and oxygen and then go further into the solar system. So the moon is also seen as kind of um, a stop to go to Mars, to go to other planets from there on. There are also, of course, science aims to be able to further discover the moon, to see, to maybe install a telescope on the moon, on the far side of the moon, to look without disturbance into the solar system, to the universe. Mm -hmm. So there are quite some reasons that make the moon an interesting place to go. And it's not just the, the moon uh, in general, but more specifically the moon's south pole, because that is where the Odysseus lander, this one, landed at least next to it. And if I remember correctly, so did India's moon mission about six months back. What makes the South Pole so important? Well, the South, the south Pole is the place where water was discovered, for example, because uh, the South Pole has big craters where the sun doesn't reach the bottom. So the, uh, the water or the, the ice that was discovered there can't melt and can't evaporate. Uh, and that's why we could use, yeah, the idea is to use this water, as I said, for drinking water, for rocket fuels, mm -hmm. and maybe to even build a moon village. So this, this is NASA's idea to have future, uh, like a permanent presence of humans on the moon, and water is crucial for that, of course. Moon before Mars. Well, tell us a bit more about this lander then. I mean, what is it going to be doing? What is its uh, aim? What does it need to do? So it's the first commercial lander that softly landed on the moon. That's kind of um, big news. Um, there are some scientific payloads on board, but made by NASA. Uh, one is, for example, measuring radiation of the moon. Radiation is important to, to know um, about because it's dangerous for a spacecraft, but also for humans, like for future human visitors maybe to the moon. Um, but most of the instruments are actually measuring and monitoring the spacecraft itself and its landing. So they look how much fuel it needs for landing, how much, um, how much dust it raises. Uh, and this is important for further technological development of the future landers, for example. But there are also some kind of <laughs> more <laughs> other payloads that are, could be interesting. There's, for example, sportswear, um, like heat reflective sportswear on board, and also a piece of art a sculpture uh, showing the moon phases. So, yeah, because why not bring art to the moon? <laughs> why not? If you're sending a vehicle up there, might as well send art. Definitely. But then this, is, this was a private mission. Uh, and there are other private missions that have also been launched into space. Is it increasingly looking like, for the United States at least, private missions are going to be the way to explore space now? Yes, uh, so not only the United States and NASA are looking into private um, actors and private partners, but also other space agencies, for example, the European Space Agency as well. Um, NASA has set, a, has set up a program especially for private companies getting into moon flights uh, and robotic missions, um, and rockets are already powered and made by private actors, for example, SpaceX. 
Um, and I think the reason mostly is money again. They want to, yeah, they want to make flights to space less expensive. Um, and also the private companies are highly interested because they see big money coming. It's what next for the moon? More missions planned uh, for this year, next year? There are definitely more missions planned. I would say until 2030, there is a big, a big run planned onto the moon. Uh, so um, there's another private mission that NASA contracted with um, another company that built the Peregrine lander, which launched earlier this year, but which came back to Earth and um, burnt in our atmosphere, so it wasn't successful. They got a contract for a next mission, but let's see if they still trust <laughs> this company to send their bigger rover up there. Uh, then the big Artemis program, uh, which is also led by NASA, is going to head further. It was postponed, but they want to um, yeah, kind of advance their plans to make up the Moon Village and the Lunar Gateway, a space station in the Moon orbit. And then other countries are interested. China will send, um, also wants to have human presence on the moon by the end of 2030. So let's see, I think there's a big rush uh, during the next years to come. Thanks very much for that update. Leah Albrecht from DW Science. Welcome.